and welcome to this HDRI Studio Rig tutorial. Firstly, I do not work for Grayscale Gorilla, nor am I sponsored by them. I'm just extremely happy with their products and so would like to share what I've learned. In this tutorial, we're going to be describing how to add a photographic background to the Grayscale Gorilla HDRI Studio Rig. This provides us with a similar functionality to Adobe Dimension CC or Keyshot. Now, the problem I had was I needed a scene featuring a photographic background but also with a reflective floor, so that it could reflect the models in order to make it look convincing. First thing I tried the traditional way of creating a floor and a background and using the compositing tag to combine them. This was fine just for photographic backgrounds, but adding a reflection channel to the floor slash background material made it too bright as it reflected all the light in the scene and didn't look right. Another thing I tried was making two materials, a reflective one for the floor and a non-reflective one for the background. But that meant it wasn't seamless because the floor reflections being brighter than the background messed it up. So the solution that I found was to use the HDRI Studio Rig. So we go to Plugins, HDRI Studio Rig. Next thing, we select our HDRI. So firstly, I'm going to switch on the interactive render region. That's Alt or, and it gives you a preview of what the render will look like. You can increase and decrease the quality using this little triangle to the side. It's a very useful feature. Here we go, see? So anyway, we need to select our HDRI file. And for this one, I'm going to choose from the road trip pack. And there is one that I've pre-selected in my head. And I'm just going to find it. it was Rooftop Convention City. Hang on a minute. Let's just find that one. The search functionality would be useful in this, but uh, there you go. Rooftop Convention City. There we go. Okay, so that's there. So now we can see the scene is now lit with this Rooftop Convention City HDRI file. And as you can see, it's quite it colors the scene quite um, quite aggressively sometimes. So what we can do is we'll just turn the saturation down in this menu here and turn, say, minus 35. And as you can see, it's removed a lot of the color. I was kind of bleeding onto the model. The reason I've done that is because I'll be, I want the color to be quite neutral because when I add the photographic background, it will then kind of be more believable and so the point of doing it this way anyway is we need a reflection on the floor. So we just pop into seamless floor controls. I'm going to add a reflection of 25%. And I'm going to blur the reflection by about 12%. Okay, so now when we when this renders, you'll be able to see the reflection on the floor. And so obviously I know what the image already looks like, and I saw a blur of about 12% matches the reflections in the photograph I'm going to use, which I'll show you in a moment. But for now, We've set it up the way we want it. You can always go back in and do it again if you need to change any settings. But what we need to do in order to add the photographic background is we need to make a copy of the HDRI rig. Okay, we'll turn that off. And we'll make this editable by pressing C. So, what we do is we go into, you can see the background here and the floors. So we need to double click on this to edit the texture tag. Go into where it says texture. Uh, load image, which is kind of cut off my screen there, but I'll bring this here. And this is a PSD that I created specifically for this purpose. So the original stock image I downloaded was this kitchen scene, which is perfect because it's got the reflections that I wanted, everything is fine. However, I wanted depth of field in the image because I find it helps the actual models stand out a bit more. So what I've done is I've just copied and pasted it, Gaussian blurred the top layer and added a gradient mask to kind of create fake depth of field. So we'll just select that one. And you can see already, that it's added that image to the background. Now we just need to add that as well to the visible floor. Okay. Well, actually, what we can do, we just, if we just copy, go here, uh, right click or two finger click on a trackpad, just copy this, go into the visible floor, and double click or right click or whatever, and paste. That will then copy and paste the texture for you. And as you can see here, this has given us a scene featuring the reflections we want on the photographic background that we want. Um, I would actually love to see this functionality baked into future versions of the HDRI Studio Rig, 
but for now we just have to hack it. So I um, hope this tutorial was useful for you, and um, yeah, have a great day. Bye-bye.